Hello guys and gals, this is Lloyd Dobson from Treasure Island, Florida. If you're looking at the screen, it says The Art of Setting Goals, Part Number 2, and we're going to cover Short Range Goals. Now, just as important as your long range goals are your short range goals. Your goals for tomorrow, next week, next month, or six months from now. These are goals that you can accomplish within the next year the immediate future. We call these goals confidence builders. When you work hard, burn the midnight oil, and accomplish these little things, it builds your confidence to go for your long-range goals. Write down in your notebook or journal all the little things that you would like to have or accomplish in the next year. How you set up this list is really up to you. You might want to break it down though by the week or by the month and uh, however you set it up uh, the way it works for you is fine. Now part of the fun of having a list is being able to check off something you obtained or completed. Every week try to check off at least one thing on your list of short-term goals and when you are able to check off something major, something on your list of a long-range goals, celebrate. Make winning joyful. Congratulate yourself. It is very important to celebrate progress. We grow from two experiences, the joy of winning and the other is the pain of losing. Now here is what also that means as far as losing. Put it on yourself. If you set up something, fooled around, didn't pull it off, put it on yourself. And get around people who will help in this area. Hey, don't join an easy crowd. Go where the expectations are high. The pressure to perform is high. That's how we grow. And I'm certain that part of the reason why people let goal setting slide is because it's a lot of work. As I said in an earlier video that I made, you will be constantly revising your list of short range and long range goals. You'll be rearranging them, refining them. You'll be redesigning them, establishing different priorities on them, adding new goals and deleting others. It's interesting to me that so many people work hard on their jobs, but they don't work hard on their future. They let it slide. Some people live such mediocre lives that at the end of the day, they don't know whether they're winning or whether they're losing. They just go through life with their fingers crossed, hoping things will get better. I know most people don't make definite plans, but don't let that be you. The person says, look, you work where I work. By the time you get home, it's late, you have a bite to eat, watch a little TV, go to bed. You can't stay up half the night and plan, plan, plan. And this is the person who's behind on their car note. He's a good worker, a hard worker, sincere. But I discovered you can be sincere, work hard all of your life, and wind up broke and embarrassed. You have to be better than a good worker. You have to be a good planner, a good goal setter. You've heard the old saying, the people who are failing to plan are planning to fail. And it's true. So work on your plan. Put yourself in the top few percent who put this power to work for themselves. Writing your goals down also shows that you're serious. And to do better, you must get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you do have to be serious. Hey, everybody hopes things will get better, but remember, the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. And hope unaided by clear, thought-out plans can finally become an illness. There's a Bible phrase that says, Hope long delayed makes the heart sick. It's a sickness. I used to have the illness known as passive hope. It's bad. There's one that is even worse, and that's called happy hope. That's really bad. The man is 50, broke, and he's still smiling. That's bad. So get serious. Make plans. Put them on paper. Make suggestions 
from experience. This is a phrase in the Bible that says, without dreams and vision, we perish. How true, humans have this unique ability to aspire, to dream, to go for something, to become something. Without, without that, life is without life. You must have dreams and never give up on your dreams. I would like to share with you some further observations I've made on goal setting. Understand that your goals, whatever they are, are affecting you all day long. Your goals affect your handshake, your attitude, how you feel. Your goals affect how you look, how you dress, how you walk, how you talk, all day and every day. Personality, conversation, activity, it's all affected by your goals. I asked a man one time, what are your goals for this month? And you know what he said to me? He said, if I could just scrape up enough money to pay these lousy bills. That was his goal. Hey, I'm not saying that isn't a goal. It is. But it is such a poor goal. It certainly isn't inspiring. You don't jump out of bed every day and say, oh boy, another chance to go out and scrape up the money to pay these lousy bills. The point is, goals should be fun. They should be big, challenging, and rewarding. They should allow you to grow. Remember, too, the major purpose of having a goal is not just to acquire the goal. The major reason for setting goals is to compel yourself to become the person it takes to achieve them. In other words, obtaining the goals is of second importance. What is more important is what you become in the pursuit of it. The greatest value in becoming a millionaire is not the million dollars. The greatest value is the skill, the knowledge, the discipline, and the leadership qualities you acquired in becoming a millionaire. It's the experience you acquired in planning, development, and strategy. It's other qualities acquired, such as courage, commitment, and willpower to attract a million dollars. You could lose everything you attain, but you would not lose the skill, the knowledge, and the experience attained. Even better than having is, be is actually being. Here's the most important question to spend some time answering. What kind of person will I have to become to get all I want? Write down a few thoughts on that. What are some of the skills that I have to develop? And some of the things you're going to have to learn. Just spend a little time writing a few sentences on this. What kind of person will I have to become to get all I want. The answer to this will give you some personal development goals. Remember, income does not far exceed personal development. All of us have to do this kind of self-examination. I have to look at my own life and say, well, here is what I want, but what am I willing to become? What will it take to get what I want? If I'm too lazy, if I don't want to learn, study, grow, to become that kind of person, then I cannot attract what I want. Now, either I have to change my wants or I have to change myself. Here are a few more points I'd like to share with you on goals and designing your future. First, if you don't right now feel you're equipped to get all you want, just remember ability will grow to match your strong dreams. That is why the goal setting process we discussed is so important. The more you work on this, the more ideas you will get on how you can change, how you can grow. There is nothing you can do about the past, but there is a great deal you can do about the future. You have untapped talents that you haven't even reached for yet. 
I am nowhere near the person I was when I met Mr. Carl Eigenbrook, the man who hired me in my early years. I'm not the person any more. I have changed. There's nothing you can do about the past, but you can do a great deal about the future. You don't have to be the same person you were yesterday. You can make changes in your life, absolutely startling changes in a fairly short period of time. You can make changes you can't even conceive of now if you give yourself a chance. Your abilities will grow. The first thing you know, you'll be able to do things you never thought you could do. You'll be able to handle things you never thought you could handle. You'll have ideas that you never had before. All of this is sparked by the goal setting process. When you know what you want and you want it badly enough, the answers will come to you. I can't tell you why it works. All I know is it works. Give yourself a chance to become all that you can become and to accomplish all that you can accomplish. Let me give you a Bible philosophy that teaches how to get all you want. Here's what it says. Ask. That's it. Ask. Of all the important skills to learn in life, be sure to include the skill of asking. What does ask mean? Ask means, what do you want? And that complete formula is staggering. It says, ask and you will receive. Hey, we ought to look into that. Intelligent asking, we must be specific though. How high, how long, how much, what size, what model. Describe what you want. Define it. Remember, well-defined goals are like magnets. The better you define them, the stronger they pull you. And give your goals purpose. Answer both questions. What do I want? That's the object. And the second question, what for? That's the purpose. Purpose is stronger than object. What you want is powerful and it'll pull, but what you want it for is more powerful. Here's the second way to ask. Ask with faith. Faith is the childish part. It means believe you can get what you want like a child, not an adult. Many adults are too skeptical. Okay, guys and gals, that's my overview on goal setting. So make today the first day of your new beginning. Learn how to set goals. This is Lloyd Dobson signing off, coming to you from Treasure Island, Florida, and go out and make this the best day ever.